All right, hello everybody. Welcome to this exciting episode of Bob the Sign Man. Today we're going to be tracking some traffic signs. I'm going to show you some a little behind the scenes on tracking traffic signs. A lot of people just don't kind of get the concept of what happens with the traffic signs. They're they're more than just placed there and forgotten about. Our traffic signs are never forgotten. We always remember traffic signs. Here's a little way on how to track them. Stay tuned for this exciting episode. All right, hello everybody. Welcome to this exciting episode of Bob the Sign Man. Been a little while since I did an episode here, and uh, you know, been busy. Um, did the COVID-19 Series 3 haircut. That's three times now I've, I've done the old uh, haircut. It turned out pretty good. Probably keep doing it. I saved myself 35 bucks every time I get my haircut. So there we go. Um, so I'm going to show you today a little bit on how I track my traffic signs. Um, we You got to have some sort of way to track maintenance. Uh, when you're going to replace them, how you replace them. Um, you, you know, the last thing you want to say is, I don't know. You know, I've, I've tried using that before, you know. Um, you know, I don't know. It doesn't work. You know, when you're doing signs and somebody says, oh, when did you, uh, how many signs have you done replace this year? I can't say, I don't know. Um, you know, my boss comes up to me sometimes, say, Bob, um, what, what signs did we do on the, uh, uh, um, uh, Silverado Trail on bike lane signs. So I, I got that for him. I can't say, I don't know. Uh, Bob, uh, we need a, a la last reflectivity checks. You know, how many signs did you check? Well, I checked them all. I got a database. Uh, Bob, uh, uh, you know, like I said, I don't know. Don't always work. Sometimes it does. Like, uh, Bob, who threw the egg at my car? Uh, gee, boss, uh, I don't know. You know, that's when I can use the I don't know. But, you know, otherwise, you know, I don't know does not work when you're doing traffic signs. So a little episode here on how I track my traffic signs. So uh, it could get a little boring to somebody who's not into this, but it's very informative, informative, and you can see what goes on behind the scenes on traffic signs. Every time you just drive by a traffic sign, think there's a little history behind that sign. Why is it there? Because somebody's somebody determined that it needed to be there, an engineer or something. Well, and then it's being tracked, it's being, you know, there's a lot of history that goes on behind the signs. A lot of people don't think about that, but I, I think about stuff like that. Okay, let's jump into this exciting episode. All right now. Okay, I'm going to take you on a little tour here of our sign tracking program we're using now called Esri. We were using a program called iWorks. Um, it became, uh, they did some upgrades to it, and it just became too... Um, it's, it's a, it was a great program for a while. They did some upgrades and it just turned out to be a disaster. Um, this uh, is called Esri. Uh, it's a, through a GIS thing that our IT has. And uh, it, it's a great thing. We can check guardrails, uh, paint markings, uh, bridge reports. I do want traffic signs on it. Um, iWorks, um, you know, they come in and it costs, you know, anywhere from $250,000, sometimes up to half a million dollars to come in, depending on the size of your area, and put all the signs into a, a, a database. Well, I had all my signs in a database. I did it by myself, so it took quite a few years to do that. Anyway, so we, we migrated away from that. We have our own now, um, this Esri. Uh, it's a great little thing. I kind of like it. It's pretty, I can only give you a little, little tour here of it. So here's here's my county right now, uh, Napa County. Um, all of my um, Terry area I territory I cover is the whole the whole county of, of uh, Napa um, show you some of my signs real quick here uh, when you zoom in on the area you can see all the little round dots those are my signs I'll take you to this particular sign that I have right here in this area uh, that I've done some work to uh, okay this is a uh, it's Soda Canyon Road at Silverado Trail it's kind of a, a busy area and uh, it's a bit, real busy road, a lot of high traffic. So here, here's the sign. Uh, it's got a great GIS thing. You can kind of see the sign right now, see the little shadow. Uh, here's a sign here. I'll, I'll get back to this one later. But here's a sign right here. You click it and it gives you the details. It's one of three. There's three signs there. Um, that's the local ID number that we use, the MUTCD number. It's a county road. The road name and number is Soda Canyon Road. Um, it, it gives you the direction that the sign is, is running in uh, right here. It's a westbound. Um, it is a uh, county road street sign and the sign description uh, right here, sign description. So it says Silverado Trail on it. It's mounted six feet high. It, you know, it gives the specifics of the sign, the size, who made it, who installed it. Um, you know, there's lots of fields you can edit 
do your own. This is a district who takes care of it. My night check zones, I'll show you that in a minute. Um, and then you can do, uh, when you come into the edit part, you can edit the, the uh, fields that you want to put in there. A lot of them have drop down menus that you can change. Um, we have, uh, when you replace a do a post or anything you do a treatment uh, we have various treatments that we can do it tracks all the treatments it'll put it in a database later and you can search all your treatments so it gives you history that this thing here it's a first in first out so if I was to do a treatment today suppose I was to um, clean the sign and then, and then I have to come in uh, three days later somebody ran it over which is not uncommon and I, I put uh, accident damage replace the post it would wipe out that um, clean thing from the clean the sign from the previous day. It wouldn't show up there, but it shows up in the database. It's searchable, and we can search that um, some more. So um, let me go back to here a second. See how? It, um, let me go back into the uh, details mode. So it's one of three. It has a street sign there. Um, the two of three. Now that's the, still the same same street sign. It's at, now it's Soda Canyon Road, and then it has. Um, click it again now it says three of three it's a stop sign uh, gives you the specifics of when it was um, installed and stuff and it's got the little thing here click to view sign the more info you click it and it'll show you what, what kind of sign it is it's a stop sign uh, kind of a neat little little dealio there um, it's you can you know edit it and stuff like for example I know the road here this is a um, no outlet sign, I believe a W14-2 warning sign. Yeah, no outlet. So uh, if you wanted to look at it again, more info, you just click it. That's what the sign is, no outlet. And you can kind of see, I'll go into the edit mode. There's the sign right there. If I just pick this up, I can move it a little bit like that. And to, you know, add, add new signs is pretty easy. You just come up here to the details. Um, let's go into the edit mode. Come into the sign master and wherever you put down a sign, suppose there was a sign right here, you just click it. And it'll fill it. Then you just fill in your specific uh, information that you need there. I'm going to delete that because I just added that one in there just to show you how easy it is to, to create a new sign. And then it does have a. Um, let's go to the details. Let's go to the sign. We'll bring up a table. It, it has a um, like a Excel spreadsheet that's um, uh, built into it too. Here's all the. Um, data for the signs you can search it by local id that's the local id is the sign post itself not the actual sign and then there might be like see right here nine nine eight three there's three different signs attached to that one specific post and there's various fields you can change the fields in here and it'll actually edit those in there i'm not going to jump in too much of this i just kind of want to give you a quick overview how we um track our traffic signs and here's the little thing right here the um, sign uh, it does have the three on the uh, three signs on the post and I'll, here's a Google view of it right here here's that no outlet sign that we moved here's the actual sign itself see it has the Soda Canyon Silverado Trail and it's got the stop sign so there's three signs on this one post and that post number is um, I think 2375 was it yeah 2375 so that's the um, number of the post not not each sign doesn't have a number but the post has a sign and then there's three um, signs associated with that like this one will just have one sign associated with it so it's a kind of a neat little program you can um, edit it yourself you can add in all your own information and stuff and make it totally customizable to how you how you want it I zoom out a little bit here I'll just kind of show you a quick little overview of how many signs I I have in my system I think I have like uh, 6300 signs in here but every, every little dot shows a specific sign what it is like right here is a um, uh, R22 or R2-1 that's a 55 mile an hour speed limit sign it's southbound it's on um, Silverado Trail our road number one there's the mile post marker you can you know uh, it's on a wood post it's mounted six feet high it shows the sheeting the size of the sign who made it it's an active sign like I said totally customizable it's a great little deal and I can go in and search fields and I can do reports and say okay how much maintenance have I done on Silverado Trail how much maintenance was done to the bike lane signs they asked me that one day uh, what if what, what have you done on Silverado Trail it's our main route it's a 28 mile road I think something like that what have you done to the bike lane sign so I was able to just pull that up in a matter of minutes and give it to them neat little program um, I'll show you my database that I have here for um, 
so here's my database that I have. I keep an Excel spreadsheet going. Um, here's that specific sign here, 2375, the one on Soda Canyon, as you can see. It has three, three signs associated with it. And I keep a lot of records in here too. I have my um, uh, drop down menus. You know, I can change these. If I was to change the sheeting, it has a drop down menu that I have I can add in. I have a date fields I can put in, you know, that it'll pick today's date. Like if I was going to replace the post today, I could just come up here and do, do the date picker and it would, um, it would, uh, you know, put in a specific date for me. Um, it shows the zone that's in there. And then I do have in here, which is pretty important if you want to build your own database sometime or your own GIS, it has the, uh, GPS coordinates on every sign. Uh, I take those and it's really easy in this um, particular program when you drop a sign down let's see if I can find one here we go here's a sign right here uh, this keeps a global ID I'm not sure exactly that must be the placement of this sign so if I want to find out where that specific sign is I can just come down here uh, click uh, this is the location as you can see as it is the cursor moves around see all my gps so if i come here and just double click it it's it's gonna um hold that number for me while i go into my excel spreadsheet and open it up sometimes i use two screens and so i can have one screen open and, and it's holding that gps number for me until i get it entered into my um specific sheet so that that's kind of a little quick little tour of how we do our traffic signs like this and then i, I also keep a um uh, night check zone spreadsheet. I'll, I'll open that one up. Here it is right Oops. here. It is right here. And there's that specific sign again, 2375. And that was on, um, on Soda Canyon Road at Silverado Trail. And if I was going to go do night checks on Silverado or on Soda Canyon Road, I have all these signs in, in specific order of what they are going down the road so we can go down the road at night and check the signs and go okay this needs this this needs this so we, we go along and I have all the westbound um, blue and all the northbound uh, blue so eastbound and southbound remains without a color on it so when we're going up um, Soda Canyon Road all the signs that are eastbound as we go in as you can see they're east they're all the white ones so I just come down to the specific signs and I look and like so you get to this sign here it's like narrow winding road and you're driving along and all of a sudden you know when you're doing your ref reflectivity checks at night you go with that sign you know it doesn't pass so you know you do your little tests on it and everything and say okay we have to replace that sign so to save time from writing them all down and everything what I do is I have this little treatment needed over here and it um, has a little drop down menu and I can just go, okay, it needs a reflectivity replacement. And then we move on to the next sign and suppose we found this sign. We go, oh boy, there's, there's a uh, graffiti on it. Okay. We got to get the graffiti off. So um, we, it's got graffiti on it. So I'll just tag it as graffiti. And then, like say this sign here, it was missing. It's not showing up. Oh, it's gone. Yeah, somebody stole it. So we just go here and I'll just tag it that it's missing. And then we know we have to replace it. So I'm going to um, get rid of those so I don't go out and think they need to be replaced or anything so every every once a week or twice a week sometimes we go out when the time changes in the winter time when it gets darker earlier and we'll do a zone like this zone six for example we'll have all the roads in a geographical area and we have 15 zones that we do so that's how i, I kind of track my traffic signs like that i have a specific way of checking the um night refl reflectivity checks i use this um, excel spreadsheet for that we use Esri to keep track of all of our traffic signs. As you can see, as I back out a little bit more, I don't want to back out too much and make them all disappear. But you know, I've got quite a few traffic signs around in the whole county. So I, I cover, a, we have 450 miles of road, of county roads that we maintain. And you can see uh, a lot of my signs that I have. Um, it keeps me busy, which is good. But it, like I said, it's a really, I could get into this program and I could show you for an hour how it works. But anyways, I don't want to bore you with all those specific details. Uh, like I said, each sign is um, assigned a number. So um, I try to write the number on the back of the signs. A lot of times I don't have them written on the back of the sign. So when I get up to a sign, like this warning sign, I, I have a mile marker so I can in my truck that'll measure distances and I usually set it so I know which mile marker I'm at and each sign has a mile marker and a sign that I work with might not have a specific um, number on it so uh, 
sometimes it's easy when you're you have corner signs or you know warning signs bridge signs and stuff it's easy to identify what sign it is but when you get into the area where you have um, numerous uh, like this road here for example it just has all these um, there's an area up here where the kids like to go start fires and throw trash there's a they like to hike to this little lake down here Millican Reservoir it's a water supply so I have all these no parking signs along this Atlas Peak Road and they're really close together and it's hard to figure out well which sign is it? So I have numbers on the back of them, and I'll show you how I can identify the numbers um, with a book that I have to figure out what sign it is. Um, so this is kind of a, in a nutshell. If anybody's using this ISRI program, I'd, I'd sure like to hear from anybody who's using it and see what tweaks you've made to it and uh, the tweaks that we've made to it. Maybe we can you know, share some ideas with it, but it's a great little program. So anyways, that's a little um, quick tour on how we track our traffic signs here at the county. Um, it's, we like I said, we migrated away from that other program, and it was costing oh, that's the only program we used. It was five thousand dollars, but then as you, they want you to start adding more and more. So it, you know, it, it's up to like, you, you, they could get into you for you know ten thousand dollars a year to to maintain that stuff. And um, my boss decided not to go that route anymore and being kind of like held hostage. It's kind of like being shook down by the mafia. So. We, we shake down our own self now because we, we pay for the IT support, but it's just a flat fee that he pays, and this is all included in it. So whenever we want to make changes and do stuff, it doesn't cost us anything, which is really great. It's a it's a win-win. And um, I'm going to kind of develop a little thing here where I can start taking pictures of the signs, and I'm going to save those in a database. But as soon as I get that developed, I'll, I'll bring that uh, news to you. Anyways, I'm going to cut off here, and I'm going to show you this book that I have um, with all my traffic signs in it and how I can find the numbers and stuff. So anyways, you know, like I said, uh, it's called Esri, G-I-S. And uh, if anybody's using this, please please let me know, and we we'll can kind of get together and kind of you know, trade some secrets or trade some ideas or trade some techniques that we're using. Okay, and on with the rest, I'm going to show you my little book that I have. Okay, as promised, the book. That's what I call it, the book. Uh, tell my uh, sign assistant, uh, hold on, I got to go get the book. You know, the book has everything in it. Um, if I was going to throw the book at you, it would hurt because it's a big book, okay? It's got every sign in here that we have in the county, all 6,300 of them on various numerous pages. I have them all alphabetized in which road you're on. And like I said, when you're when you're pulling out and you're working on a sign and, and uh, you, you go, oh, what is that sign number? And you, you, can, you can look it up pretty easy. Um, so I have my, um, suppose we were to work on a sign here. And I don't know if you can see this. Anyways, so here's all my signs in here. They have little pictures of icons. It has the road that I'm on so I can look it up, the direction. It has the milepost marker. Um, I just have cer certain, field, certain fields filled in here out of my Excel spreadsheet that I need out in the field, okay? I don't always need all of these. So suppose I was to work on this uh, W1-6 sign, and I, I want to find the milepost. I have the milepost marker, but I want to find that. Remember that number I told you I put on the back of all the signs? Well, not all the signs have numbers. So I can look it up and go, okay, well, that's sign number 1436. And so I have a um, pin marker, and I'll write 1436 on the back of the sign if I've replaced it or done any maintenance to it. So that way, when I return to the sign, I can always just, you know, jot it on a piece of paper if I have to. But most of the time, I have my um, laptop with me, and I can do that, Esri, right in the field. So I have a laptop that I take, and I use an iPad as the hotspot. So, and then I have a... Um, a, um, well, I guess you call it a, uh, a VPN. I can log into my county servers and change my Excel spreadsheet that I have stored on the county server so I don't lose that information because I spent a lot of time to work on it. Uh, <laughs> like I really trust my ID department so much that I actually have a backup of it because they're, they're great guys though, but you know, things can happen and I don't want it to happen to me. So anyways, like I said, this, this book that I made really comes in handy for finding the um, specific signs that we need. And sometimes when we're tracking down signs, we'll pull up to a sign and, and we want to find out, you know, we're going down this long road and we want to find the, okay, we're at this sign here. Here's the sign. The back says 2287 and we're at mile post marker uh, 6.23. I can set my my um, reader at 6.23 and then we can follow along up. If we're going to replace a new sign in, we want to know where the mile post marker is. Or if we're looking for a sp specific sign, 
uh, we can find it, you know, by tracking our mile post marker. So this book really comes in handy. It's kind of backwards a little bit because I need the uh, information on the front here. And, and that's why it's on the opposite side because it's so thick. If I was to um, bind it on this side, like a regular book, I couldn't see those numbers that I need. Plus it has the little pictures in there and stuff. They're all colored and everything. And it's all divided, like I said, divided up with the rows. And we put, I put a little sticker on the front here so I know which is the front of the book. Anyways, I use this book a lot. It comes in real handy. And you know, when I add new signs in and stuff or take signs out, they're not gonna be in the book anymore. But when I do new signs, we write the number on the back. I used to have these little punch things that I'd punch out the numbers and we had these little decals made. But I find now I use one of those paint markers. It's a black paint marker and we write them on pretty thick. We've got one of those wide chisel point ones. And so we write the numbers on the back. I haven't had a problem. They don't they don't come off. They last for years and years and years and years. And so that's that's another way, another part of my sign tracking program that I have. Anyways, thanks for watching this exciting episode of Bob the Sign Man. We'll be coming at you soon. Uh, if anybody has any ideas what they, they would like to see done or any questions or anything, maybe I can sh you know, shoot a little video or something on it, kind of um, you know, trade a little stuff back and forth, whatever you want to do. Anyways, let's uh, you know, keep tracking your traffic signs and don't ever get caught up in I don't know. Alrighty, as always, thanks for watching.